Back in an ancient time, before man and beast had separated themselves as different, I made a video. This one. At the beginning of it, I mentioned the idea of an animal iceberg. A theoretical iceberg where the deeper you go, the more obscure an animal you find. I thought in that original video, Sicilians would be hard to outdo in terms of depth on the iceberg. But I did some digging to find something deeper. I mean, come on, what do you think I was doing all this time? What I found is a little rodent who, despite living among us Americans, I have heard and seen almost nothing about. This is Aplodontia rufa, the mountain beaver. Okay, whatever, a random beaver thing, big whoop. What's so special about it? Well, behind those beady eyes is a deceptive character filled with many twists. Let me immediately set one thing straight. This thing isn't a beaver. Beavers belong to the family of rodents called Castoridae, whilst this mountain beaver is within Aplodontidae. So, not a beaver. Oh what, next thing you'll tell me is they're not even mountains. This species actually goes by many names. Giant mole, ground bear, shuelul, mountain boomer. Fascinatingly, all of which are wrong. Even Shuello, which was the name Lewis and Clark gave the creature after asking the Chinook locals about it, is wrong. Shuello is actually just the native name for the robe made from the animal, not the animal itself. So what is this thing? Like I said, it belongs in the family Aplodontidae, along with no one else. Whilst there are families of rodents out there with literally hundreds of living species, the mountain beaver is the sole member of its taxonomic family. As well, Aplodontidae is one of the most primitive and ancient of all rodent families still in existence. Appearing first in the last Eocene some 34 million years ago, Aplodontids were among an army of rodent lineages who began conquering the world in the middle of the Cenozoic era. The preferred turf of these Aplodontids was a swath of the American West centered around the Great Basin. In the later Miocene epoch, the mountain beavers diversified among a changing cast of North American marvels that included the early predecessors to camels and horses, horrific cousins of pigs, and, oh, hey, actual beavers. The Aplodontid split into two major groups, one that stayed relatively similar throughout its natural history and looks much like the mountain beavers of today. The other group grew larger and weirder and spread over much of the Great Plains to exploit other niches. Just look at them. This fella has horns. The only rodent to ever have horns, in fact, except, of course, the jackalope. Sadly, throughout the Miocene, a striking decline occurred that struck the Aplodontids. Why exactly is largely not well understood. When attempting to align their decline with known changes in climate, vegetation, and competition, none of those variables really correlate. The strongest correlation is the rise of grasslands across North America, but even this remains a shaky cause. Whatever the reason or combinations of reasons, aplodontid numbers plummeted throughout the rest of the Cenozoic. The first to go were the second group mentioned, whom had given rise to the horned rodents. The first group as well sharply declined, and abandoned the Great Basin in favor of the moist mountain regions to its west. This resulted in the current state of aplodontidae, the sole survivors of the family living across what is now the Cascade Mountains and parts of California. For this reason, the mountain beaver has been considered a living fossil among the rodents, and it has several traits that definitely distinguish it from modern rodents. Superficially, the trait that stands out is the tail. It is nothing like the naked tail of other rodents, or even the leathery paddle of real beavers. Largely, it is just a furry stump, now vestigial to the animal. For the truly weird characteristics, you have to look inside the creature. Its kidneys are phenomenally weak for a mammal. It has an inability to efficiently concentrate the urea in its body, meaning that it expels nearly as much water as it consumes in a day. This means these little guys are peeing a third or a fourth of their body weight all day, every day. As well, it is probably the reason they have to stick around the moist deciduous forests of the Cascade Mountains and foothills. They are dependent on a constant source of water. Oh, and their other trait is that males totally lack a scrotum. I, I have no way to visualize that image, that's all I got. Despite these anatomical anachronisms, the mountain beaver still lives quite an active lifestyle among the leaf litter and bushes of Cascadia. Although not dam builders, mountain beavers are prolific burrowers. 
They create systems of numerous tunnels and entrances that lead back to a central nest chamber, carpeted with trampled leaves. Another of their chambers is a designated toilet area, where they dispose of their feces. The entrance of these rodent manors are obscured by vegetation. One source even notes a man who observed burrows in Washington covered by tent-like structures crafted from sticks and leaves. So much for primitive. From these burrows, the mountain beaver ungracefully scrambles across the forest floor, eating up any plants it can find to settle its voracious appetite. Their quest for food will take them all around the forest, sometimes clambering up trees to nod on branches and chew off bark. So disruptive can they be that the Forest Service classifies them as a pest. So if you're walking around the American Northwest and think your forests suck, it might just be because of those pesky mountain beavers. So yeah, that's the mountain beaver. I still think it's really funny that out there, where many of you probably live, is a rodent that basically nobody sees save for the Forest Service. And despite their generic appearance, they somehow stand out in numerous ways, be it phylogenetically, anatomically, or their pretty impactful natural history. I just hope anyone who's got this far has added just one more obscure little animal to their mental Pokédex, and if you ever see one, to appreciate the mountain beaver. Long time no see. As I've announced previously, I'm sorry to leave this channel in such long hiatuses. I know a short little species spotlight video doesn't fully make up for it, but I hope you all appreciate it. Honestly, I really am surprised by how much interesting stuff there is on the mountain beaver. Maybe it speaks to my own growth as a researcher, but I found a lot more to work with than I expected. Anyways, thanks to the wonderful music tracks, videos, and images I used to make this video, and thank you for watching. What do I say? Oh yeah. See ya!